Okay, Bruch HaMabam. Welcome everyone. Good afternoon everyone. Shalom Aleichem to the Kailal Agra de Perka. Monday afternoon national shir. It's great to see everybody. We have an amazing topic today. I want to let everybody know uh, some public service announcements. If anybody wants to join us in our upcoming trip to Greece. Greece is a country where thousands of Achreinim uh, lived and there's a tremendous amount of Jewish history. We're going to other locations as well, if anybody would like to join us this, up, this summer. Um, Bezos Hashem, the Sefer on Chabanim is nearing completion. And uh, a number of upcoming uh, volumes in the queue, if anybody would like to participate. Parsha Shlach. We have an amazing topic today. This subject, this year, will enhance your life. It will improve your career. You'll have new opportunities. And we're going to learn a perspective on the narrative of Parsha Shlach that's uh, revolutionary. The Pasuk begins, Shlach Lecha Anashim. Send for yourself men via Suru Eseretz Kanan. And spy out the land of Canaan, Asher Anin Noisein Levnei Yisrael, that I am giving to the children of Yisrael. Ish Echad, Ish Echad. One man, one man. Lamate Avoisav. So off the bat, why does it say twice? One man, one man. Weren't there only one person per Shevet? So there were a total of 12 men. Why does it say Ish Echad, Ish Echad, Lamate Avoisav, Teshlachu, Kail Nasi Vahem? Another question is, what's Shlach Lecha, Shlach Elashon Yachid, and Tishlachu is Elashon Rabim? So which one is it? Now friends, we're familiar, we usually uh, think that there were a total of 12 Meraglim. After all, that's what it says in the beginning of the Parsha, where the Torah lists the names of the Meraglim. Ve'ela Shemay Sam Lamate Ruvain Shamua Ben Zakor, Lamate Shemay Shafat Ben Chayri, Lamate Yehuda, Kalev ben Yifune, Lamate Yisachar, Yigal ben Yosef, Lamate Ephraim, Hoshea ben Nun. You know, it's interesting, the trap by all of the Shvatim, you have a Zakef Gadal, Lamate Gad Guel ben Machi, except for by Yehoshua ben Nun. By Yehoshua ben Nun, it says, Lamate Yosef. Right, Lamate Ephraim. I'm sorry, Lamate Ephraim. Hoshea Benun. There you don't have a Zakev Gadal. The Ramami Pano says it's because all the other Shvatim, they separated between them, the Meragel, and their Shoiresh, which was the Shevet, except for Hoshea Benun. Remain connected. By all the other Shvatim, there's a Zakef Gadal separating between. Be it as it may, we're, we tend to think there were a total of 12 Meraglim. However, if you look in the Yushalmi, there is a revolutionary Shita. In the Yushalmi and Saita, Parag Zayin, Halacha He, Ksiv, Ish Echad Lashavet, Al Daite de Rebbe Akiva. Do Amar Lashonai Rabuyan him. As there is a Lashon Reboy, Ish Echad, Ish Echad. There's a Reboy here. What do we use the Reboy for? The Reboy for the Reboy is we learn out Arba Esrim Bi Arba Hayu. There are 24 Maraglam. Shisha Asar Be Eshkal Ushmoina. 16 carried a cluster of grapes, 8 carried figs, in other words, according to the Rabbi Akiva, there were 24 maraglam, 16 for the eshkal, and 8 for the figs and the pomegranate. But Rabbi Shmuel says, by the way, it's interesting, because according to the Yushalmi then, Kalev and Yehoshua participated in carrying the fruits. The Rashi and the opinion of the Bavli is that Kalev and Yehoshua did not participate in carrying the fruits. But this opinion of Rabbi Kiva is in contradistinction to Rabbi Shmuel. What does Rabbi Shmuel hold? Rabbi Shmuel says 
V'yaldaite de Rabbi Shmuel, de Hu Aimer, L'shoinois kfulen heim, Shnei ma'asar, Hayu shmoina ba'eshkal, V'arba ba'teinam reminim. Eight carried the cluster of grapes, four carried the figs, and this is the, a great machlaikas. So according to Rabbi Akiva, there were not 24 meraglim, there were, there were not 12 meraglim, there were 24 meraglim. And I know you're thinking, that's not what they told me in yeshiva, that's not what they told me in kindergarten, that's not what they told me in nursery school, that's not what they told me in elementary school, or even in high school. Well, you've graduated to get the real scoop. The real scoop is, there are 24 meraglim. That is the opinion of Rabbi Akiva in the Yushalmi. And not only is this the opinion of Rabbi Akiva in the Yushalmi, Toysfus and Masech the Soita, Daf Lamedalet, brings this Yushalmi, Aldaite de Rabbi Yishmael, there were 12, and Aldaite de Rabbi Akiva, there were 24. Comes Rabbi Kivager. And Rabbi Kivager in the Goli Nashas, in Soita, Daf Lamedalet, as we know, sometimes Rabbi Kivager will just quote a Gemara, and if we're fluent enough in the Gemara Rabbi Kivager is quoting, we should be able to figure out what's troubling Rabbi Kivager. Well, says Rabbi Kivager, Ayin b'masnisin reish Sanhedrin uminayin le'eda. Look in the mission in the beginning of Sanhedrin, and how do I know an Eda? So, what exactly is bothering Rabbi Kivager? It behooves us to look in the Gemara and Sanhedrin. We know the first mission in Sanhedrin occupies the first Amud. And the Mishnah says like this, How do I know a Sanhedrin Ketana, a small court, is 23? Shanamar ha'eda v'hitzilu ha'eda. And the Eda will judge, and the Eda will save. Which means, Eda shoifetes the Eda matzelas. A Eda judges and an Eda saves. So that means you have to have 10 acquitting, 10 finding guilty. Harei kan esrim. And then you need another 3. Now, how do I know an Eda is 10? Because it says by the Miraglim, Ad Masai lo Eda hara hazais. How long will this bad community continue the sin, this bad convention of people continue their bad ways. So we know there were 12 Maraglim and we subtract Yeshua and Kalev. So the source that a Sanhedrin is 23 is predicated on the idea that Ada is 10. How do I know Ada is 10? Because it says Ada by the court and it says Ada by the Maraglim. And presuming there were 12 Maraglim, Minus Yeshua and Kalev, so that's 10. So it, what seems what Rabbi Kivager is bothered by is if the source that an Eda is 10 is from the Miraglam, that only works out according to the opinion of Rabbi Shmuel, that there were 12 Miraglam, so you subtract Yeshua and Kalev. But according to Rabbi Kiva, that there were 24 Miraglam, and if you subtract Yeshua and Kalev, so that would leave you 22. So we should learn out an Ada is 22, and in that case a Sanhedrin should be 47. You need 22 acquitting, 22 finding guilty, and another 3. So in other words, where Rabbi Eger, he doesn't tell us what he's bothered by, but by citing and referencing this Gemara in the context of Taisvis and Saita that brings the Shita of Rabbi, Rabbi Akiva, that there are 24 Miraglim, where Rabbi Kivager seems to be bothered by, is so then we've destroyed the source that accord is 23 based on Ada, Ada plus 3, 10, 10 plus 3, to be 22 plus 22 plus 3. Friends, there's another Gemara and Shas that should now be highly problematic. Namely, from where do we learn out Minyan? Where do we learn out Ein Davar Shabakdusha Pachas Me'asara? It's a Gemara in Brachais, it's a Gemara in Megillah, and Dav Chav Gimel Mebei, it's Rab Chia Bar Abbas, and then Rabbi Yechanan. It says, "V'nikdashti b'soich b'nei Yisrael," that every matter of kedusha needs ten. How do I know that? It says, "V'nikdashti b'toich b'nei Yisrael," and it says, "By Kairach he badlu mitoich ha'eda." And how big is an eda? We learn out eda is we learn out eda is ten from the Miraglim because it says, "Masai lo eda harazais." So if 
the Meragla Morten, we apply that to Kairach. It says Toich by Kairach. From there we'll extend it to Venekdashti the Toich Bene Yisrael. And in that case, as uh, we could ask, in other words, if Rabbi Kiva Eger is asking that according to Rabbi Akiva that there are 24 Meraglim, then a Sanhedrin should be 22, 22, and 3, we could ask, then according to Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva you should need a minion of 22. And if, by the way, if you need a minion of 22, it would come out that uh, many shuls would never have a minion. You know? Imagine you walking around, I need a Tzvonsagun Svayer, you know? Forget a center. A center is going to do you no good. What are you going to do with 10 people? You need 22 people, L'chaira. And by the way, I found that none other than the Chassam Soifer himself asks this question. The Chassam Soifer in the Torah's Moshe Shalim on Dvarim. Chassam Soifer says, Mi Tamati! I always wondered that according to Rabbi Kiva, that there are 24 Miraglim. Imkei minolei la'edo shi'asara. Do you know Edo is 10? Eidah, we know Eidah is 10, we learn out from the Miraglim. But, uh, but then, well, we, sh we should see that you need 22. Comes the Chassam Soifer. And what the Chassam Soifer says would seem to answer Rabbi Kivager's question as well. That even though there are 24 Miraglim, and take out Yeshua and Kalev, but nevertheless, only 10 of them spoke Lashon Hara about the land. So even if there were 22 Miraglim, only 10 of them um, disparaged the land. So therefore when it says, An Masai Yiyah it's only going on 10. But then the Chassam Soifer and Parashas, and L'Chaira friends, that would answer both questions. That means Eida by Minyan would be 10, and L'Chaira, to answer Rabbi Kivager's question, Eida by the Sanhedrin, should also be 10. The Chsam Soifer in Torah's Moshe at the end of B'Shalach, he says, he also asks this question, that according to Rabbi Kiva, how could you learn in Eida Pachas Me'asara? You could say, there's another source that Eida is 10. How's that? We could take out the, we don't need Eida. Because if you look in the Yushalmi, the Yushalmi says, How do you know a minion is ten? It says the Yushalmi, Venekdashti Besoich Bnei Yisrael. And it says, Vayerdu Ache Yosef Asara Betoich Haboim. So there's another source to learn out ten makes a minion. It says Toich by Venekdashti Betoich Bnei Yisrael. And it says Toich by the Ache Yosef. And just like the Ache Yosef were 10, so too the Nikdashti B'Soich B'nei Yisrael is 10. So even if you say there are 24 Meraglim, we don't need Meraglim for a minion. L'Chaira though, we would, Rabbi Kiva Eger's question will st would still stand. How do you know Eida by the Sanhedrin is 10? By the way, another question you could ask is we know there's a mitzvah of Kiddush Hashem. Right, you're familiar? The mitzvah of if somebody chas v'shalom, puts, um, somebody threatens one's life with the performance of any mitzvah, one does not have to give up their life to fulfill a mitzvah. However, if it's in public, if it's in front of ten people, then one would have to give up their life so as not to uh, violate a mitzvah. That's learned out from the Nikdashti B'toich B'nei Yisrael, which again you could ask, if the source of that is the Meraglim, then it should be 22. Okay, so one answer we said is, well, only 10 Meraglim spoke bad about the land. Maybe they all carried the fruit, but only 10 of them spoke badly. Only 10 of them spoke badly about the land. And then another approach would be to say that we don't need Eida at all. We could learn Toich Toich straight from the Ache Yosef. Which would only answer the Chassam Soifer's question of how do we know a minion is 10, but would not answer the question of Rabbi Kivager, then we no longer have a source that Ada for Sanhedrin is 10. I saw quoted that regarding this question, there is an approach in a Sefer, Yesh, Lamed, Sa, Yesh Samach Lamed, Yesh Seder Lamishna. 
I looked everywhere, Yesh Seder La Mishnah, there, there was no independent Sefer, Yesh Seder La Mishnah, except at the end of the Yachinu Bayaz, you have a small commentary called ya- Yud Samach Lamed, which is a Yesh Seder La Mishnah, is the writings of Rabbi Shaya Pick, the author of the Masar Sashas, who added on to the Masar Sashas. And he also asked Rabbi Kivager's question, um, that according to Rabbi Akiva, how do you know Ein Davr Shabakdusha Pachas Me'asara? Or he also asks our question: How do you know for Yeharik V'Al Yavar, you need ten people? And don't say we paskin like Rabbi Shmuel, because we paskin like Rabbi Akiva. We would we would always follow Rabbi Akiva's ruling. So Rabbi Shai Pick says like this. Did you wonder, if there are 24 Miraglim, why doesn't the Torah tell us their names? That's another important question. Who are these guys? Who are they? So says Rabbi Shaya Pick, according to Rabbi Akiva, the fact that the Torah didn't say their names, and it only mentions certain names, like we said earlier in the Chassam Sefer, the, only the ones whose names were mentioned were the ones who disparaged the land. And it's re- only them that, w- w- that the Pasuk says, and Masai lo Eda hara asher alai. But the ones whose names were not mentioned, even though they took the cluster and they took the remain, their kavana was not lara. So according to that, when Rabbi Kiva learns out the Sanhedrin is 23, it's only going on, it's because only the Miraglim whose names are mentioned are referred to. Now, it's very interesting. There is a sefer, Mincha Chareva, a Rabbi Pinchas Epstein on the Yushalmi in Soita, and he deals with uh, the question that we asked in the beginning. Why does it first say Shalach Lashon Yachid, and then Tishalechu Lashon Rabim? He says that the truth is, like we asked, if there were twenty-four Miraglim, then we should only. Uh, how do you know an Ada is 10? It should be 22. He says that actually there were two charges. Tishalechu is two people were sent per each Shevet. One is Shlach Lecha. Shlach Lecha is according to your vision. And then Tishalechu is according to their vision. So the ones that Moshe Rabbeinu sent were Rashi Ha'am. The ones that Klal Yisrael sent were just regular people. The Ida Hara was referring to the Rosh Sanhedrin, who Moshe Rabbeinu sent. So in other words, according to the Mincha Chareva, even though there were 24 Meraglim, but there were two different, distinct mess, uh, messenger ships, namely the ones that Moshe sent and the ones that the rest of the Jewish people sent. But Rabbi Isai, I want to present to you a startling interpretation and approach to understanding the meaning of the 24 Meraglim and if there are 24 Miraglim, why are they not mentioned? Why are only some, some names mentioned? You know, there's a Gemara in Sanhedrin. We're accustomed to thinking that by the Birchas Yaakov, when Yaakov Avinu was on his deathbed, and Yaakov Avinu says, B'soidam al nafshi, b'kaholam al techad levavi, al techad kevoidi, that Yaakov Avinu was saying, I don't want my name mentioned, I don't want my name mentioned, in the episode of Kairach, that's why it says, Vayikach Kairach, Ben Yitzar, Ben Kahas, Ben Levi, but it doesn't say Ben Yaakov. And I don't want my name mentioned in the episode, the Kalam Al Techad Kavaydi, I don't want my name mentioned in the episode of Zimri Ben Salah. However, the Gemara, that's how Rashi learns on Chumash. But the Gemara in Sanhedrin says a different shot. What did Yaakov Avinu not want? Yaakov Avinu was saying, 
Besoidim al tavay nafshi v'kom al techad kavoidi. The Meraglim. I don't want my name mentioned in the story of the Meraglim. What does that mean? That Yaakovinu doesn't want his name mentioned in the story of the Meraglim. What does that mean? Where would his name be mentioned and where is it not mentioned? There's a very mysterious Medrash. The Medrash says in Bamid Bar that Moshe Rabbeinu says to them, Vayomer Aleyam, Alu Zeba Negev. Go up in the south. The Medrash says, Go up im Shehem Oilem. Go up with those that are going up. What does that mean, go up with those that are going up? The Sefer Birchas Shmuel of Rav Aaron Shmuel Kadanavar has an amazing approach to this whole idea that we, are, we encounter in Toysvis and the Yishami and Saita that there were 24 Miraglam. But he begins by asking a very obvious question. How could anyone say there are 24 Miraglam? You know, you may be able to get away with it if you just learn Parsha Shlach, because in Parsha Shlach, all you see is a, less, a list of 12 Miraglam. And you'll say, well, maybe there were another 12. It's Ishachad, Ishachad. Because it doesn't say anywhere in Shlach the sum total of the Miraglam. Yeah, that's right, it doesn't say in Shlach the sum total of the Miraglam. But it does say in other places the total of the Miraglam, namely in Sefer Devarim. In Sefer Devarim, the Pasuk says, Look where my icon is. Va'ekach mikem shneim asar anashim ish echad lashavet. I took 12 men. Well, if the Pasuk explicitly says I took 12 men, then how could Rabbi Kiva say there were 24 Miraglam? You know, there are a few questions you could ask over here. You have the names of many Shvatim, but one is conspicuously absent. Lemate Ruvein, Shamua ben Zakur, Lemate Shemain, Shafat ben Chori, Lemate Yehuda, Kalev ben Yefuna. What about Lemate Ephraim, Hoshea ben Nun? Why by Hoshea ben Nun does it say Ephraim? He's not, Ephraim's not one of the Shvatim. By Menashe it says, Lamate Yosef, Lamate Menashe Gadi Ben Susi. So, by Menashe it says Yosef. By Yehoshua and Ephraim it doesn't say Yosef. So, why is Yosef not mentioned? Furthermore, where's Levi? Levi didn't, Levi's didn't have a representative. Why is Levi not mentioned? So says the Bircha Shmuel, this idea, this concept that there are 24 Miraglam, and based on this idea, Rabbi Kivegar has a question, well, in that case, how do you know Ada by Sanhedrin is 10, so Sanhedrin should be 47, how do you know, Chassam Seifer says, how do you know Minyan is 10, Rabbi Shaya Pick says, how do you know a Minyan for Dvarm Shabbat Farhesya is 10, Says Rev. Aaron Shmuel Kadenover, this tradition that there are 24 Miraglim cannot be taken on a physical level. Because actually, if you look in the Arizal on Parsha Shlach, which I found as the Marmakamis of the Shir were uh, going to print, the Ari is in Likute Torah, Parsha Shlach number 23, the Arizal says that. When the 12 physical Miraglam went, were dispatched to go check out the land of Israel, they were boosted and they were supported and they were infused with what is called Soid Ho'ibor. Soid Ho'ibor is when the Neshama is, uh, is infused with a uh, nitzutz of another Neshama. They were infused with the Neshamas of the Shevet that they were representing. So. You want to know who the missing 12 Miraglim were? Why the Torah doesn't say their names? The Torah does say their names. Really weird. Lemate, Ruvain, Shamua ben Zakur. You know who? It was Shamua ben Zakur, and he's supported by Ruvain. Lemate, Shimon, 
from Shafa ben Chayri. Shafa ben Chayri was supported by the not by the Shevet that he represented, namely Shimon. Lamate Yehuda, Kalev ben Yifune. Kalev ben Yifune was supported by Yehuda. So you'll ask, well, that's nice, because Lamate Yosef, Lamate Menashe, Gadi ben Susi. Gadi was supported by Yosef, but who was Yehoshua ben Nun supported by? Ah, oh, says the Bercha Shmuel, Yehoshua ben Nun, Moshe Davin for him. What did Moshe do? Moshe added the Yud. The Yud is Keneged Levi. Ha'asiri Yia Kadosh. So the neshama of Yosef, nislabish b'menasha. So in other words, Yosef's soul went to Menasha, to the shevet of Menasha. Namely, Yosef's neshama boosted Gadi ben Susi. But who boosted Yahushua? That's why Moshe, who was from Shevet Levi, he davened Koyoshiacha. He added the Yud. The Kedusha of the Yud was Levi himself. The Ish Echad, Ish Echad Lashavet. Ish Echad was Lashavet, the Shevet itself, the one of the Shvatim itself. That's why Yahushua was given the extra Yud. That represents Levi. By the way, so what happened? Aye, but still, there were 24 Miraglim. Their answer is, they started off as 24 Miraglim. Yeah, they started off as 24 Miraglim. But there's an idea, the Bercha Shmuel says, that the same way, you know, the Arizal says in many places, that when a person does an Avera, the Neshama could depart from them. Like if somebody gets angry, their Neshama can so to speak, leave them. So too, if your own neshama can depart, certainly if you have someone else's neshama, the ibor of another neshama, that neshama certainly could depart. And that's what happened. All the shvatim, they did not remain ne'aman and true and authentic to the shevet that was, they were hosting. And therefore, Ruvain left Shafat ben Chayri. And Shimon le- uh, Ruvain left Shamua ben Zakor. Shimon left Shafa ben Chayri. All the Shvatim, their, their co partners, their Ibor, the Shevet that was infused in them to be Mechazik them, left because they did not remain true. However, except for Kalev, the Kalev, Ekev. He had a different spirit. What do you mean he had a different spirit? He had in him also the spirit of Yehuda. So he remained true to the Shevet that was being Mechazekim. And therefore he, re- he was able to withstand the persuasion of the Meraglim. This is the meaning of the mysterious Medrash. Alu Zeba Negev. Go up in the south, to which the Medrash says, Im shehim oilim, go up with those who are going up with you. Well, what do you mean with those who are going up with you? Who's going up with the Miraglim? The answer is the ones going up with the Miraglim were none other than the Shvatim themselves. Says the Arizal, incredibly. This is the meaning of Ki ruach acheres avdi kalev ikev hoisa ruach acheres Imai, he had another spirit with him. Ah, oh, says Arizal. This is the meaning of V'yasuru es Eretz Kenan Asher Ani Noisein Levnei Yisrael The children of Yisrael, the children of Yaakov. Namely, literally, the twelve Shvatim themselves who are going up with you. But when they acted badly and they, they acted with Kavana Ra, look, in the Lashon of the Ari, he says something amazing. Kasher heru maaseyam, ubo bekavon ara, oz nistalku mehem oisan ha'iburim kederech hanohig v'zeh. Kenoida, even the neshama of someone themselves could be mistalik when they sin. Wow. Now, the uh, Rav Shmuel Aaron Kadenover says, that's why when Yehoshua 
went into Eretz Yisrael, who did he send? Kalev and Pinchas. Why Kalev and Pinchas? Kalev, because Kalev remained true to the soul of Yehuda that was with him, and Pinchas, who was from Shevet Levi, because Shevet Levi also was able to stay connected to Yehoshua, and therefore these were the two Shvatim that were not persuaded the first time around, so Yehoshua utilized them now the second time around. Now, this is the meaning of that Yaakov Avinu says, I don't want my name associated by the Meraglim. You see, because the Shvatim, the Shvatim were literally in the Meraglim. But says Yaakov, leave me out of it. I don't want to take part of it. I don't want to have any connection to it. Ah, says Rishon Aaron Kadenover, with this, Ari, we can answer the question of Rabbi Kiva Egar. So it's an amazing type of approach where he's using the Kabbalah to answer Alam the Shakasha. The Kasha is, if there were 24 Meraglim, then how we've destroyed the source that an Ada is 10, that a Sanhedrin is 23, that a minion for Dara Shabbat is 10, that a minion for Kiddush Hashem is 10. The answer is no. They started off as 24 Meraglim, but as they were sinning, the, the Neshamais of the Shvatim departed from the Meraglim, and Mamela, when it came down to it, the Ada Hara was only 10, because he had 12, and we take away Yeshua and Kalev. I, but there were 24 Meraglim, 24 when they started, but when the Shvatim realized that they were not being influenced Latoiva, they booked, they left, and they were not part of the situation. Friends, I would add, I would humbly add, that we know that Kalev went to Davin. If you look at number 15, Vayalu vanegev vayavoyad chevroin. He went up in the south and he came to Chevroin. What did he do? So Rashi says, Kalev went alone. To do what? To be mishtateach al kivrayavais. Not to be persuaded to be among the Meraglam. What's very interesting is, the Torah doesn't say why Kalev went to Chevron. You're right, simply, and this is how Rashi learns, he went there to Davin by Kivrei Avais. But Rashi doesn't even say Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Even though Avais is, usually, is always referring to Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. But is it possible to say that there was another intention of why Kalev went to the Mar Samach Pela? You know, why didn't Yehoshua go to the Mar Samach Pela? Friends, who's buried in the Maras Machpelah? So what do you mean? Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Leah. Maybe Adam and Chava. The Yalkut Shemoni says that in the Midbar, because Yehuda promised to bring Binyamin back, so his bones were wrestling. His bones were rustling. His bones were shaking and rolling. On the Pasuk, Shema Hashem Kol Yehuda, the Yalkut Shemani says, from here we learn that Moshe Rabbeinu Davin for Yehuda, he said, Yibonu Sholeilam. If Yehuda is Bitsar, and he Davins, please elevate him. V'yal amoy tevienu shenikbar im avais ba'aretz. Yehuda is buried with the avais. What does it mean, V'yal amoy tevienu shenikbar im avais b'ma'ara? Yehuda is buried with the Avais. By the way, the Sifri also says that Yehuda is buried with the Avais. The Ravid on the Sifri asks, but it does, isn't it Kiryas Arba? And there are four Zugais? So that means Adam and Chava, Avram and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, Yaakov and Leah, but not Yehuda. So you say, well, maybe because Yehuda is not buried with his wife. To which the Ravid says, you know, it's Doichek, whoever heard that Yehuda was in the Maras Pela, maybe it means he's buried near the Maras Pela. It doesn't say, Im Avais Bekvura, but rather, Im Avais Bameara, in the cave. 
It says, uh, excuse me, im avais bikvura, not im avais bima'ara. Maybe in Chevroin. Maybe he's buried near the, the avais. So I was thinking, maybe that's the reason why Kalev went to the Marasa Machpela. He's not just going to Davin by Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, then Yeshua would have gone. He was going because he wanted, wanted to pray by the uh, kever of Yehuda. He wanted to pray by the kever of Yehuda. Why? Because he was the only one that remained true to the soul of the Sheva that was within him. All the other Shvatim were unfaithful to the Miragel that was accompanying them. But Kalev, perhaps in order to remain true, so you'll say, was Yehuda already buried there then? Because if you look in the Yalkut Shemani, it says, V'chi atzama is Yosef bovad helu b'nei Yisrael mi Mitzrayim? V'haloi kol shev v'shev helu atzama shifta mi Mitzrayim? So, you know, it's unclear whether his, he was buried there at that time, but at least maybe he was going to the Makkaim where Yehuda would be buried. Says the Ari, now we understand why when Yosef HaTzadik encounters the brothers, what does he charge them of? Meraglim atem. You're Meraglim. Meraglim? The Shvatim were Meraglim? The Meraglim were Sh- uh, Shamua ben Zakur, Shafa ben Chori, Kale ben Yifune. Not Ruvain Shimon Levi Yehuda. No, Yosef knew Baruch HaKodesh. The Shvatim would accompany them. He says, Meraglim atem. He was referring to this side of the Shita Rabbi Kiva, that the 24 Miraglim were none other than the Shvatim who accompanied the, the Miraglim. And therefore, Yosef says, Miraglim atem. So when Rabbi Kiva says there are 24 Miraglim, this approach is learning that the Miraglim themselves were accompanied by the souls of the Shvatim. And in that case, the three Lamdash questions that we raised Number one from Rabbi Kiva Eger, as to the source of a Ada for Sanhedrin being ten, the question of Sam Soifer, that the source of Minyan being ten, the question of Rabbi Shaya Pik, the source of Farhesya for Chilal Hashem being ten, could be answered by saying what the Arizal teaches us, that the souls of these Shvatim departed when they sinned, and therefore ultimately even Rabbi Kiva agrees there are only ten unfaithful Miraglim. So you'll say, but you said at the beginning of the shir that this shir will expand my horizons, it will give me more career opportunities, I'll have job offers, I'm not finished yet. There's a famous story about Rav Shlomo Kluger, where Rav Shlomo Kluger was once, when he was the Rav in Breida, there was a father who had a baby boy, and the father was about to pass away and the family wanted to wait for the father to pass away to name the baby after him and Rav Shlomo Kluger said no 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 do the bris milah. and they did the bris milah, and the father had a refush lema. and they asked Rav Shlomo Kluger what's the pshat he said the pshat is like this remember the angel that went to rescue Light he's the same angel that went to heal Avram so the question is, why did he have to heal Avram? Just go straight to rescue light. So Shlomo Kluger says, it's because that angel didn't want to rescue light. He's not coming down from Shemayim to rescue light. But once he already came down to heal Avram, he's already down, you know, he's already down the block, so he'll make an extra stop. Same thing with Elio Anavi. Elio Anavi is not coming down from the heavens to heal this father. But once he's coming anyway for the bris, he'll make an extra stop. He'll add a stop, you know. He'll add a stop and heal the father. Well, in the Sefer where the story appears, they, they uh, br- print another story about Rav R- R- Shlomo Kluger. You know, all the great Achroinim in Europe were in multiple rabbinic posts throughout Europe. The Shagas Aryeh, R- R- Shlomo Kluger, the Malbim, many, many, if not most, 
great Rabbanim were chased out of uh, their rabbinic posts in Europe. As Rabbi Sol Salanter would say, any rabbi that they don't chase out is not a rabbi. But any rabbi that they could chase out of town is not a man. Anyway, the story goes that Rabbi Shlomo Kluger was reduced to having to teach children. And one time, Rabbi Shlomo Kluger wanted to have an opportunity to speak. He was looking for Parnassa. And so he comes to the city of Broida. And some people recognized him, and, he, and uh, they said, you know, maybe give a drasha. So, and this way they'll give you Talmidim. So he went to the Rosh Sha'ir, Rabbi Zalman Margolis, and uh, he, la- he allowed him to give a drasha. Now Rabbi Shlomo Kluger said, please do me a favor, come to my drasha. Rabbi Zalman Margolis said, no, I don't listen to drashas. So Rabbi Shlomo Kluger says, listen, I'm gonna, it's going to be with him in Chamarav, you'll be there anyway, just stick around. And... So Rav Shlomo Kluger gave the drasha, and everyone gave him shkoyach, except for Rav Zalman, he didn't even look at him. So Rav Shlomo Kluger said, what did I do wrong? Why didn't you give me shkoyach? Everyone else gave me shkoyach. He says, because according to you, there are 24 miraglim. So all the drashas in the Gemara fall away. So Rav Shlomo Kluger says, what do you mean? I didn't make this up. Don't you know it's Yushalmi and it's brought in Toysus and Saita? And when Rav Zalman heard that, he said, really? I didn't know it was Yushalmi. He says, how could I be the Rav of the city and you're just a Malamed? You need to be the Rav of the city. Anyway, so what do we see from this? That if you know this idea that there were 24 Miraglim, you get career advancements, you get job offers, you get salary raises, just by knowing that there are 24 Miraglim. So, my bracha to you is, in the merit of us learning this material, you should all have a tremendous aliyah in all of your endeavors, and I wish you all a wonderful day. This week, the Wednesday night share will be Tuesday night. Please stay tuned for that. And we started today, if you, uh, you could join us every morning from 9 to 9.15, Mishnah Bura Daf HaShavua. We learn a blot a week. It's from 9 to 9.15. It's an amazing limud. Please join us. And wishing everyone a wonderful day. Bracha One second, one second, please.